Hi, welcome back to P3. Today we're looking at y equals e to the power ax plus b plus c. And essentially we're looking at differentiating functions which are e to the power x or a function of x. And e is quite an important number in mathematics. It's a special number. It's a number where the gradient function is exactly the same as the original function. Now what that means for you and I is that when we differentiate e to the power x we get e to the power x. We get the same thing and that has a lot of uses. Now I'm not going to go into a lot of information about it. I'm sure there are plenty of videos out there if you want to get into a little bit more details and find out more about it what we're going to concentrate on is what you need to know for your p3 maths course so let's get started now i said that when you differentiate f of x equals e of x you get the same value but what happens if it's not an individual x what if it's e to the 3x, e to the 5x, e to the 2x plus 3, or something like that. So if y equals e to the power some constant times x, when I differentiate, this part is always going to stay the same, e to the power of some constant times x. And then in front of it, what I need to do is differentiate this kx and then multiply it by that value. So let's look at differentiating these. So the first one, dy by dx equals, so e to the 5x, that stays the same. Differentiate this, gives me 5, so it becomes 5e to the 5x. Looking at the second one, e to the 4x plus 2 stays the same. Differentiate this gives me 4. This is 4e to the 4x plus 2. And then the final one, y equals, so the e to the 5x is going to stay the same. When I differentiate the 5x, I get 5. 5 times the 3 is going to give me 15. And that's how easy it is to differentiate exponentials. Now, you also need to be able to sketch these graphs. You already know what they look like, what shape they should be. Now, when you're sketching, you need to think about where the asymptote is. Now, this is going to happen when it's a value that it can't possibly take. So if I look at this, this e to the power x plus 3, it's impossible for this to be 0. So when this is, if this whole term was 0, that would be where the asymptote lies. So y equals 2. So I know that I have an asymptote at y equals 2. And then I need to look at what's happening with my graph. Now it's a positive one, so I should know that the shape is going to look like this. Um, but I can also check it out what's happening at individual points. So even if I didn't realize what it was going to look at, I can start with x equals 0. And when x equals 0, it's going to be 2 plus e to the power 3. Okay, and that's this point here, 2 plus e cubed, which is roughly 22. So you can see in my graph that really I should have made this a little bit higher, but it's fine. Now, so this would be closer to where it is, but the problem with drawing it like this is that it doesn't really show the shape of the graph. So I'd still always be tempted to draw it like I had it, you know, down here so I can properly show off the shape of the graph. 
Now just before I give you a few to try, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and if you've enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and comment in the section down below. Here we go. Okay, so let's have a look at this one. So let's see what happens when x is 0, y is going to be 2e to the minus 1, or the same as 2 over e. So roughly around 0 0.7, 0 0.8. Now, in this graph, I've got no constant, so I know that I'm going to have an asymptote at or on my x-axis when y equals 0. My graph just going to look like a standard graph and this point here is 2 over e. Okay, second one now we can see, you know, when this was 0 we know it can't actually be 0 but we imagine it's 0 to get our asymptote makes it a bit more obvious when it's these straightforward ones. So I'm going to have an asymptote at y equals 1. So y equals 1. And there is my asymptote. The multiple of 4 in front is going to make it steeper. And it's a negative x. So it's going to be a reflection. So it's going to be low on the right. Heading up as we go on to the left. And this value is going to happen when x equals 0. x is 0, so this will be 1. So we get 4 plus 1 is 5. So this is crossing the y axis at 5. So if you want to find the tangent, we first need to know the gradient at that point. So dy by dx is going to be 2e to the 2x. And then when I substitute x equals 5 in, I get my dy by dx is going to be 2e to the power 10. Now we go to y minus y1 equals mx minus x1. We know y minus e to the 10 equals 2e to the 10 x minus So that is y minus e to the 10 equals 2 e to the 10 x minus 10 e to the 10. Adding e to the 10, 2 e to the 10 x minus 9 e to the power 10. And there we have it.